On the west coast, when it comes to natural disasters, they have earthquakes. The heartland has tornadoes, the south has hurricanes. Here in the northeast, our natural disaster is Lyme disease. And the cause of this natural disaster? Disease carrying ticks. But scientists think they can stop this pest by genetically engineering another. Nantucket Island, the sleepy and idyllic summer paradise, has a tick problem. Ticks are the main transmitters of Lyme disease, a bacterial infection that can cause fevers, fatigue, and rashes. If left untreated, infection can spread to the joints, heart, and even the nervous system, causing serious long-term health problems. According to the CDC, more than 300,000 Americans are diagnosed with Lyme disease each year. But on Nantucket Island, up to 40% of residents have been diagnosed, according to a local health official. How serious is the Lyme disease issue here in Nantucket? In about another week, my office will be 50 or 60% tick-borne illnesses. With no FDA-approved vaccine on the market, scientists at MIT, Harvard, and Tufts think that they found an alternative, but controversial solution, using the power of genetic editing, specifically in a little mouse. They call the proposal Mice Against Ticks. Ecologists have known for quite some time that the white-footed mouse is the primary reservoir, not just of Lyme disease, but of pretty much every major tick-borne disease in the Northeastern United States. Ticks aren't born infected. They get infected when they bite their first prey. Typically, that's a white-footed mouse. The chain of transmission starts when a tick bites a white-footed mouse carrying Lyme disease. The tick gets infected and then usually moves on to bite a deer where it continues to feed and reproduce. And with few natural predators, deer populations have exploded, increasing the spread of ticks and the odds that you're bitten by one. So what's the solution? We want to heritably immunize the local white-footed mice that are responsible for infecting most ticks. So the idea is if we can immunize all of the mice, then we can disrupt the chain of transmission. In other words, if mice can't carry Lyme disease, then they can't pass it on to the ticks who bite them. To immunize Nantucket's mice population, S. Felt and his collaborators at Brigham and Women's Hospital propose hacking into the white-footed mouse's genetic code. How are you genetically altering the mice to make them immune to Lyme disease? Some mice in nature are immune. They acquire immunity naturally, just like our bodies acquire immunity when we get a cold. So this one actually has its door closed, which means, means that there's a mouse. there's a mouse in it. Oh yeah, hey little guy. Let's take the immunity genes from some mice that have developed natural resistance, and let's encode them in the mouse genome such that their descendants will be protected from birth. To do that, scientists isolate the genetic code for Lyme disease immunity from the few wild mice that naturally have it. Then they can edit that special code into many more mice. Any offspring of these modified mice would inherit Lyme disease immunity. And if thousands of modified mice were released in Nantucket, they could pass on Lyme disease immunity to the island's entire mouse population. These mice would be expected to be resistant to Lyme uh, for decades. That will lead to less ticks infected, which will lead to less humans infected. But nobody has ever released genetically modified mammals into the wild. So scientists are planning a two-year trial run. They want to release thousands of modified mice onto a private, uninhabited island. We're looking at candidate field trial islands up and down the East Coast in a, a number of different states. As for where the mice would come from, the first few thousand for the field trial could be raised at a university. But even if the scientists are happy with the trial run, this bold idea has to get past the residents of Nantucket. Part of our goal is to draw on your knowledge of the local environment. They'll vote on whether or not to approve the project. Here on the island, science is coming right up against small town democracy. Our only economic driver here is tourism. Everything is connected to that. The ticks and the diseases that come with it right now are an acceptable risk to live here and visit here. If it was to get worse, I'd say we're kind of done for. My worst fear is that we're going to make a modification that affects a whole chain of reaction in this environment, and this island is small. When you make a reaction in a negative way, 
it is going to affect us very quickly. No matter how much they test this, we do not know how this is going to affect the environment five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. To address concerns like these, S. Felt and his collaborators are working on adding an expiration date to any genetic modification. It would mean that after a set number of generations, the genetic changes will no longer be passed on to offspring. But the technique is still in development. How critical is community acceptance of this? It's vital. Without it, the project cannot and should not move forwards. In fact, I think the world could use a salutary positive example of a community saying no and scientists walking away. Even if the people of Nantucket approve the project, a full-scale release of modified mice is at least eight years away and would need approval from the EPA and possibly the FDA. But if the experiment works, scientists see the possibility of using it on a broader scale as a tool to stop the spread of other harmful viruses and diseases around the world. If we move forwards and something goes wrong, that's on us. If we choose not to use it, then all of those future infections that might otherwise have been prevented, that's also on us. There's always a cost to doing nothing. We need technology, not just to keep the world running, but also to make it better.